Hi everyone, Brayden here, and today I want to talk about sciatica. Now when we talk about sciatica, I like to think of sciatica as a symptom rather than something that you can hold on to and sort of say, I have sciatica. I'd rather people say, I have sciatic symptoms. That way we know that these symptoms can disappear and we can get rid of it rather than holding on to it and being worried about this symptom all our lives. So the sciatic nerve stems from the lower spine and travels down the back of the leg all the way down to the feet. So sciatic symptoms could range from anywhere from a pain in the glute to the back of the leg all the way down to a tingle in the toe. Now I want to talk today about piriformis syndrome. The piriformis attaches to the sacrum and to the greater trochanter of the hip. Its actions are external rotation, abduction and extension of the hip and it also helps as a stabiliser of the hip joint. Now in my opinion the main role of the piriformis is this stabiliser of the hip joint as we're going through different motions like walking and squatting and running and any kind of sport that you want to play. Piriformis causes this sciatic symptom down the back of the leg by pinching the sciatic nerve between the muscle and bone. Now the main thing with piriformis syndrome is that this piriformis gets pretty angry. It gets swollen, it gets overactive, and that's usually because the muscles around it that are meant to do the primary movement, example, hip extension, hip abduction, like the glute maximus and the glute medius, they stop working as well as they should, which means that the piriformis takes on the slack. Now it starts to get a little bit angry by swelling, uh, tightening, uh, becoming all around stiffer. Now in any way that this piriformis might stiffen up, it can pinch on the sciatic nerve. Now the sciatic nerve goes either over the top, underneath, or sometimes, if you're very unlucky, through the piriformis muscle. So I'm gonna give you a test a stretch and an exercise to do to help with your sciatica. Now with sciatica in general, it can come from the spine. So I would like anyone that is suffering with sciatic symptoms to please go visit your GP first and make sure that it's not coming from your spine and it is coming from this piriformis that we're about to explore. So first I've got two tests for you that could indicate that it's your piriformis giving you these sciatic symptoms. Secondly, I want to show you this stretch this stretch is for the piriformis and the glute muscles in general. Lastly, I want to give you this exercise because a main issue that I find with an overactive piriformis is that the glutes around the area have turned off and this can come from sitting too much or having a stationary job where we're not moving around very much and the glutes just stop working as they should. So this is the piriformis length test. Simply all you need to do is lay on your front. Now you can do this yourself by just laying on your front and bending your legs or you can get someone else to do it for you. It's usually best if you can get someone to do it for you. You bend the legs, relax them and let them drop out like this. That is a negative test as both legs are around the same distance apart and there's no discomfort from the client. A positive test would look like this. Where this leg doesn't go down as far, it doesn't want to go any further the client might express discomfort, uh, those sciatic symptoms, or generally that the leg doesn't want to go any further down. Please, if we do have any structural abnormalities with the hip socket, like arthritis, a new hip, uh, any, any accidents that you might have had in the past, please don't take this test as, a, as gospel, as that could affect the results. The next test I want to do is to see if that glute medius is working. So this is the glute medius sideline abduction test with added resistance. Because the insertion point of both the glute medius and the piriformis are relatively close to each other, they can perform the same action. So if the glute medius isn't working, this can cause that piriformis syndrome again. So all we need to do for this test is to have the client side lying. I always pop a hand on the hip to stop cheating. Uh, I'll show you why in a second. We then want the client to just abduct the leg as high as they can. Fantastic, and back down. So to cheat sometimes, what the clients can do is rock back and use some of their quads and TFL to help with this abduction. This is gonna give us a false negative. So we, don't, we wanna make sure that that client isn't cheating and that they're nice and straight. So what a positive on this test looks like. Firstly, if the client can't abduct the leg at all, or if they struggle and the range is really poor and the legs are shaking and it's cramping up here, that could show that the glute medius here isn't working. Secondly, if they're not cheating and they can get the leg all the way up, just hold that there for me, fantastic. I sometimes add a little bit of resistance. So I use around two fingers and pop some weight on the leg here. If they can hold me, fantastic. If they can't resist, simply two fingers and a little bit of weight, and that just simply flops down, 
then we've got a weak glute medius. So if we do find that the glute medius is weak, this is one of the exercises that I want to give you. This is just a resistance band, this is the very light band. We're going to pop this over the feet and up to the knees. Now the further that we have this away from the joint that is moving, the more difficult it will become. So having this further up here will be easy, to the knee harder, past the knee harder, and probably most difficult when it's down near the feet. So again, make sure the client isn't cheating by rocking back when, we, when they're doing this, as this will tighten the TFL up here, and it, it basically won't strengthen the glute medius, which is what we want to achieve. All we're going to ask the client to do is abduct the leg. Fantastic, back down. A, a nice number that I give people to do is three sets of 10 on both sides. So what we're looking for is abduction, Nice, slow resistance, abduction, you feel that just here, fantastic, just like that. If we want to make this a little bit harder on ourselves, what we can do is bring the leg into a little bit of extension and point the toe down at the other heel. This will absolutely isolate this glute medius and then when we abduct again it becomes much harder. So with a little bit of extension and internal rotation we've isolated that glute medius a lot more there. If using a band is difficult, don't use a band. The weight of your leg could be enough to start with. But I really want people to progress through this. So if you've got a very light band, start with that, move it down the leg as we get stronger, then go to a heavier band. Move it down the leg as we get stronger, go to a heavier band, or up the reps. Okay, so the stretch that I want you guys to be doing at home is something in yoga called the pigeon pose. And what I'm about to show you is the advanced version of that. So we want to get nice and close to a bed, the side of your sofa, a worktop, wherever you want to, wherever you want to be. So we want to lift the leg onto the uh, surface like this. We want to get as close as we possibly can. We want the leg to be resting flat onto the surface. If the leg's up like this, we know we've got some tightness in and around the hip, but we, we eventually want it to flatten down onto the, onto the uh, surface like this. If we find ourselves moving away from that stretch, this might be a little bit advanced for you. But to advance further onto this stretch, what I want to do is hinge at the hip and come forward. I'm not bending my spine, I'm hinging at the hip and coming forward onto the sofa or the bed or whatever, just like this. I'm looking to feel a stretch in the back of my hip just here where my glutes are. I want to hold this for around 30 seconds to 2 minutes, whatever you can handle. If you want to get a little bit more advanced, take the leg over here, try and stand a little bit straighter. For me this one's quite difficult, I can really feel that in my, in my glute right now. We're coming over, we can take it a little bit more advanced, we can mess around with this in different areas and just take that stretch. Just, I just want you to explore this area um, and feel that glute stretch. If that stretch is a little bit too advanced for you, this is the basic version of it. We want to simply cross the legs, which can be difficult for some people. Um, so if it is, try working on this. This is going to loosen that hip joint as well. We basically want the uh, ankle to be resting on the opposite knee and this leg to fall flat. Uh, that's a nice loose hip. If it's up here and it's not going anywhere, it's something to work on. Maybe this is a nice stretch. I'm, I'm holding on to my ankle here and I'm pushing down on my knee. I'm pulling up and I'm pushing down. Not too hard, this is just a nice little stretch. But the more advanced version of that would be to grab the knee and pull it up into the opposite shoulder. There we have it guys. Three things you can be doing for piriformis syndrome that could be giving sciatic symptoms. So if you are struggling with sciatica, please go see your GP first. They will rule out any spinal issues that you might have. Um, if they say you just need to go do some stretches or if it's, t if it's muscular, fantastic, then this video is for you. Thanks very much for watching guys. If you did enjoy this video, please consider giving me a thumbs up and hitting the subscribe button along with the little notification bell. That will notify you whenever I post new videos. Thanks again guys and I'll see you next time.